Hey, I'm Brian. And I'm Brandon. And this is our hack. Hello everyone. As you can see here, we have a diagram of our network. The router is at 192.168.1.1 and that contains our entire network. It is not connected to the internet so that we could have um, we could run our pen testing without any um, interference to the surrounding networks. We have a laptop that runs Windows 8.1 and a VirtualBox set up on that so we wouldn't mess up the Windows 8.1 installation. The VirtualBox is running Ubuntu 14.04 and we will be using that to um, shellshock the Raspberry Pi which is running 3.12 of Raspberry and 2.22 of Apache. We'll now proceed to use some networking tools to hack the network, so to speak, or just observe it and kind of see what's vulnerable and what's not. <clears throat> Let's proceed. Here we are using Kali Linux um, running Armitage. It's a hacking software that you can use to run a series of attacks against a computer. What I'm going to do now is run a port scan and a service scan and try to see what's running and what's open. We can also use this to exploit the server. Here I am going to run nmap, it's a port scanning utility. So I'll type the IP address in of the server that we're trying to look up. As you can see it's 192.168.1.102. And I'll pull up the services as well as <clears throat> the ports that are open. Here I'll highlight the ports that are open right here and we can see all the possibilities that we can attack. And now we can look at the services and see that it's running Apache. And it even tells us the version. Now if I go back and hover over um, the little monitor it shows us that it's running Linux Debian. These are all things that we can use to hack the server because we have this knowledge we can look up possible penetrations against a Linux Debian running Apache. So here we have the website uh, that's hosted on the web server that we're trying to attack. It's a pretty simple website that could be used to register a user um, to play on a specific server and also to see who's online at the moment and any other information that you might want to give to people who play this video game. So if we take a look to, at the HTML code, we can see that there's an iframe element with a CGI uh, web page being loaded in there. And that's important because we need to use a CGI script in order to exploit, uh, to use the Shellshock exploit. So if we register a user, we can see that we get redirected to registeruser.php which is a really simple web page, it just says successfully added the user. And if we go to a web page that doesn't exist, such as slash ind, uh, we get an Apache error that tells us um, the version of Apache and that it's also running on a Debian environment, uh, which confirms what we found earlier using Kali Linux. So the goal of our hack is to gain access to this web server and upload our own version of registeruser.php as well as a file, a zip file, that could contain any number of malicious items. And then that way, after the user registers, they will be shown our version of registeruser.php, which contains a link to download this zip file. So now I'll pull up a terminal uh, this is a remote connection into the virtual machine that I have running on this computer that's running Linux. And here's the command that I'm going to send. Um, it's a curl command, and it's basically an HTTP request. Uh, so I'm going to pull up Wireshark now and start a recording session to just see what kind of traffic is going on in the network while I run this command. Um, so this curl command uh, is an HTTP request similar to what your browser would send to a web server when you request a web page. This request is going to request that CGI script that we saw embedded in that website right away and 
what the dash a tag does is it sends a string that represents the user agent and this is a variable that your browser would normally send uh, so for example if you're using Mozilla Firefox it would send information about what version of Firefox you're using and other information about the system that you're that's sending the request this way the website can customize what it displays for you based off what version of software you have so if you have a mobile browser for example it might redirect you to a mobile website but in this case we're gonna send it a function that's the empty parentheses and empty brackets there followed by a semicolon and what this does is it'll get passed through to batch because we're requesting a CGI script so the CGI script will run and this variable will get passed to it and when the variable gets passed what follows the variable in our case slash bang slash ping will also get run so this way we can actually pass commands to the web server and have the web server execute them. So when we run this command, we can see first that we get a 500 error returned. And that basically tells us that something went wrong with our HTTP request, which in our case is good, because if it went right, then we would have received the output of the CGI script instead of an error. And when we look at Wireshark, we can see that there are indeed three ping requests coming from the web server at .1.102 uh, to our laptop at 1.101. So now that we know we can run commands on the web server, we will give it some commands to run that will cause it to download the files that we want it to. So it'll be the same kind of curl-a command but instead of pinging, we're going to send it. We're going to tell it to use the bash command, and we'll send it a string of commands to run. So first, we will cd to the temp directory, and then we'll issue three wget commands to download from our web server hosted on our virtual machine to download the files register user.php, resource pack.zip, and run.pl, and then finally we will execute that run.pl script using the command perl. So now, since I have this remote terminal to uh, the Linux operating system that's on my virtual machine, that's also acting as our uh, the web server that we have access to, I will show you the contents of that perl script. Basically, all it does is move the two files that we downloaded from the temp directory to slash var slash www which we found using Google that is the default directory of Apache 2.2 running on Debian. So now we will uh, just copy and paste this command into our terminal and give it a go. see a bunch of network traffic and we also get the 500 error which is a good sign that means that uh, the request was didn't was not successful uh, but the command probably was so now if we go to the Raspberry Pi web server and enter test information to the register user we see a slightly different page that we did before if we view the source we can see that this is the register user.php that we were hosting on our web server and caused the Raspberry Pi to download. And if we hit download our resource pack, we can actually see that we are getting resource pack.zip. This zip file could contain any number of malicious code. It could be a virus or rootkit or a backdoor or adware. Um, so as you can see, based on using this exploit, you can do a lot of damage to a web server that's not properly patched. Thank you for watching our very well put together video. We hope you subscribe and comment below. Click like and many other human like things that you do to videos when they are finished. Goodbye.